Throughout the years, John Laws has touched the hearts of millions. Join us in honoring his extraordinary career as we celebrate the king of talkback radio. In the world of radio, he's the common denominator, the voice of the people. No, I don't think anybody cares about it. Oh, they do. Oh, they do. Mate, I'm 50 and I reckon your show is the top. <laughs> Thank you. He can make a politician. Dr. John Hewson, good morning and welcome. How long do you uh, think that we've actually been in recession in Australia? Or break a listener's heart. You can't think properly because you're having difficulty in expressing yourself, and I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry for you uh, as far as that's concerned, but what you're trying, let me tell you what you're trying to say in essence. But when he switches off the microphone, the king of radio retreats to another world. In the peace and quiet of his farm, you see another side of John Laws. The family man, the father, grandfather, the doting husband. After his years of wild living, it was John's third wife, Caroline, who finally tamed the lion. He had about the carriage of ten lions. It, it was as if he was a ruler of men, almost too much, I thought. What caught your eye the first time you met him? I thought he was a frightfully romantic figure. I was madly in love with Caroline when I was 16. Desperately in love with her when I was 16. And uh, I remember coming home to my mother and saying, I think I'm in love. But they were too young then to know just what they had. Anyway, we went out different ways. Caroline joined Sadler's Wells Ballet and went to dance with the Royal Ballet in London. And I went to the bushes of Jackaroo and uh, we just drifted apart. John set a course for a life of his own. Along the way, he found fortune, enough to buy whatever he wanted, like this classic cruiser. What would have happened to the, this old beauty if you hadn't have saved it? Well, I, it'd be awful, wouldn't it? Because it's, uh, it's a wonderful old boat. And As I, he sailed through two marriages, Caroline was up north in New Guinea, raising four daughters on a coffee plantation. After a couple of decades apart, what odds that they would find one another again? We met each other about 20 years later in, in the tunnel of love at Luna Park. You see, I told you you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I called out John... It's Caroline, no response. So then I called it John, John, it's Caroline, Cameron Waller. And I heard this voice and I thought, well, that's it. And my marriage at the time was shaky. Uh, and it, from that moment on, it was irreparable. And it was just a matter of time before we'd uh, spend the rest of our lives together. 